Greetings and welcome, friends. We're taking a look at the 2008 kneecap question number one, non-calculator. Uh, back in the day, 18% of our students got this right, and 30% of the state's students got this correct. Uh, correct? Correct? Correct. Yes, okay. So um, it says if x squared is less than y squared. So this is going to require some analysis of signs similar to what we did the other day. Um, it says which inequality must be true. So x squared is less than y squared. So I'm going to have to figure out not only signs, but the magnitude or the size of these numbers as well, or, or take into consideration. So let's see. Uh, is A necessarily true? And if it's not, could you give me a counterexample? No, it's not. Why would A not be true? Or what's an example when it wouldn't be? Um, why can be like Perfect, right? So counterexample is the idea of, so suppose I had 2 is less than negative 4, which is not true. However, if I squared those, 2 squared is less than negative 4 squared because 4 is less than 16. So perfect counterexample, my friend. And the idea of a counterexample is that you just need a single example that breaks the truth of an argument, okay? Uh, where proving an argument takes a lot more work because you have to prove it for all possible cases. Let's see. Let's consider B. Is x cubed always going to be less than y cubed? Yeah, I think we'd have to consider some positive and negatives. Let's see. Um, all right, so if this is true, uh, it's probably a positive and negative situation. Actually, 2 and negative 4 might even work again. Uh, 2 cubed is probably not less than negative 4 cubed, I'm guessing. Um, 2 cubed is going to be a positive value, and negative 4 cubed is a negative value. Whereas in the case of squaring negative 4 cubed, Sorry, squaring negative 4 would have become positive. So that's a no-go. So there's a counterexample for B. Um, let's see. Let's consider C. Now, actually, this is directly related to what we did before. The absolute value of X is less than the absolute value of Y. Yes? yes? Well, let's actually consider this. Let's combine a couple skills of ours. My original fact was x squared is less than y squared. A legal mathematical move I could do is root rooting both sides. Uh, technically, I could even plus or minus it, but we'll ignore that for now. And now the square, <coughs> oh, goodness. The square root of x squared, you guys yesterday would have told me is x, and Connell's rule would have applied adding absolute value. And the square root of y squared, is y, and Connell's rule applies there as well, which notice is that. So it's definitely, definitely got to be c. But let's consider d for a minute. d is actually an interesting case regarding uh, the magnitude of these numbers. 1 over x is less than 1 over y. Uh, so let's see. Let's consider some counterexamples for that, where x squared is bigger than y squared. So like, 4 and 9 again. So let's say x is 3 and, oh sorry, x is 2. Is 1 half less than 1 third? No, because this is like 0 0.5. 50 cents is not less than 33 cents or whatever, right? So that's not true. However, if x was 2 and y was 3, I would have uh, in the original 2 squared is less than 3 squared, which is true, because um, that's 4 is less than 9. In fact, uh, reciprocating numbers, um, a large number reciprocated becomes very small, and very small numbers, when reciprocated, be become large, which is interesting. Uh, very small being numbers that are uh, between negative 1 and positive 1. Um, for instance, if, I, if, say, x originally equaled 1 half, then 1 over x would have equaled 1 over a half, which is 2. So actually, uh, reciprocating small numbers makes them bigger, uh, 
in the case of those very particular small numbers. So anyways, so thanks for watching, Internet friends. Hopefully you, too, can be a master of the 2008 kneecap question. So when you time travel and take kneecaps back in 2008, you'll be very smart. Congratulations. Have a great day. Oh, wow. How kind.